Lately, exploring Beijing on my bike has become a new thing. The city is such a great place for cycling. First, it is flat as a pancake. Second, most of the roads have bike lanes, and they are gigantic. Plus, it's a great way to soak in the historical and cultural vibes of the capital. Believe me, this is probably the best way to explore the city. But the more I ride, the more little issues I come across. Like, there are always electric scooters going the wrong way, cars and buses hogging the lane, and some lanes can be bumpy. If these can be solved, more cyclists will get on the roads. After all, cycling saves money, and it's also a carbon-neutral way of getting around. Some estimates suggest that every time a driver switches to cycling, that cuts a ton of carbon emissions every year. And I know this because I did some research. This is the latest report on the risks of cycling in Beijing. It highlights safety as the number one thing influencing how people get around. Then the report notes that an evaluation system composed of twelve factors assessing the cycling environment. Things like wearing helmets or not, roadside parking, and non-bicycle traffic have been revealed as some major headaches. So it looks like my experience is not an isolated case. On the other hand, the cycling infrastructure, according to the report, has been greatly improved. In 2019, Beijing opened its first bike expressway. It has been used millions of times by cyclists, and it's still being expanded now. And this growth is happening all over the city. The amount of bike lanes is increasing and widening, which in some places means cutting vehicle lanes. This is because of a series of policies on promoting non-motorized transport in cities. The biggest change is from the bike as a vehicle to the person as a vehicle. For example, in Beijing, as an example, in 2017, the city of Beijing has introduced the bike and bike system into the city plan to promote the use of bike and bike systems in the city. In 2019, Beijing also introduced the bike and bike system into the city plan to promote the use of bike and bike systems. 绿色优先的这个城市交通发展理念，建立了相应的地方的这个技术标准体系，包括咱们说这个自行车的骑行和停放到底应该做多宽，对吧？新建道路应该怎么做？既有道路应该怎么改造？都有了。Under this plan, the government sets specific goals annually. For example, this year's plan has improved about 220 kilometers of roads in the main areas, and to address the headache we mentioned earlier. 200 new law enforcement devices will be installed to crack down on、uh, illegal parking, speeding, and riding the wrong lane. 当务之急，我觉得是要针对呃传统自行车、电动自行车、这个三轮车这种不同的骑行主体啊，区分人群来制定相应的骑行规范，加以分类的管理和引导。你比如说，这个针对电动三轮车的这个行驶速度、呃装载物品的重量都要有相应的规定，还要从。规划、管理、运营这个多个方面，多措并举来齐头并进。比如说，首先咱们规划层面可以做好这个呃路权的保障，有条件的城市或道路可以尝试把自行车道、自行车道做宽，而且电动车呢赋予单独的路权。那此外呢，也要不断的加加大慢行路网的这个密度，这个缩短缩短过街的距离，这样呢也能够减少减少逆行。未来我们也要不断的倡导这个，包括共享单车骑行也要佩戴头盔。As of 2022, there are more than 100 million people in China regularly cycle, so it's not a surprise to know China is sometimes called the bicycle kingdom. 总体而言，慢行交通在我们的呃城市交通系统中将占据更重要的地位，不仅是作为实现双碳目标的优先途径，呃，也是促进健康可持续城市生活的关键因素。那在特大城市、大城市，呃，慢行交通与公共交通啊将会。得到更加充分有效的衔接，从而形成一个一个综合的、多元的一个呃低碳交通网络。那在中小城市呢，慢行交通将会成为主要的一种交通方式。So when the cycling environment improves, that can only increase the amount of cyclists on the road, and this will create a future that is greener and more sustainable. 